I just finished watching WWDC and overall I'm impressed with some of the new features that are coming. Of course I have my criticisms of certain operating systems not really getting anything substantial but without further ado we're just going to dive right in and we're going to get started with the newest changes for iOS and iPadOS. So these are the changes that you would want to be aware of when you update to iOS 18 in the fall. Apple is continuing the customization of iOS and iPadOS and it will allow you to have your app icons anywhere on the home screen. So if you used an Android phone before, it's basically just that. You can also change the colors of the app icons based on your wallpaper and you could also get a dark mode version of the thumbnails and from what I've seen they look pretty good but once iOS 18 beta is out I'm going to update that and let you know how it actually is. Going along with the customization trend Control Center also got an update where you'll be able to add different pages to your Control Center in order to get a better handle of all of the items that you add there. You could also have larger app icons on your home screen. So this is really good if you have some accessibility um, issues. You could also make the point that having a larger app icon makes it easier to have bigger iPhones, especially since the 16 Pro Max is supposed to be the biggest iPhone to date. I'm pretty sure an Android phone has this next feature, but with iOS 18 and iPadOS 18, users will have the ability to lock apps behind Face ID. So if you are handing your phone over to someone and you don't want them getting into some of your personal apps, like maybe like your banking or maybe some intimate photos, you can lock those apps. And if that person decides to open that app, they would have to authenticate with Face ID. Finally, iOS 18 is going to provide support for RCS. So texting your Android family and friends are going to be a lot easier. You'll be able to exchange higher quality photos and videos. And in addition, you would also be able to have some text effect. You can also do a bunch of different animations. I don't know if a lot of people are going to use it, but it's there. Messages on iOS 18 and all of the updated Apple platforms would allow you to schedule messages. So if you have maybe a significant other and you probably don't feel like texting them like good morning like every time, you could probably s set up a good morning text to be sent automatically while you sleep in. This next feature I think is going to be pretty useful. However, it's only going to be useful if you have friends in the Apple ecosystem. And this is tap to pay. So similar to AirDrop where you bring two phones uh, close together, one person will be able to pay the next person. I am pretty sure like NameDrop, this feature is going to be misunderstood by the masses. SharePlay is going to come to iOS 18 and iPadOS 18. And this would allow you to have your family members share their screen so you can help them troubleshoot any issues they have. Also, there is a new passwords app. So this is taking the passwords features from settings, making it its own app, and it's going to be available on all of Apple's platforms, including Windows. So in terms of customization on the lock screen, you'll finally be able to change the flashlight icon and the camera icon with any two apps that you deem fit. And if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, then you'll be able to activate those apps using the action button. iOS 18 is going to be compatible with these iPhones. And now we come to iPad OS. So everything I previously described also applies to iPad OS. However, the biggest feature that got a lot of screen time is the calculator app. Yes, it's Finally, the iPad is going to get the calculator app. This calculator app will allow you to solve math problems using the Apple Pencil. So for example, if you are writing down an equation and you try and solve it, then 
the calculator app is going to be smart enough to actually solve that equation for you. You could also update the equation as well. And there's plenty of use cases for it. However, this is if this is the biggest feature to iPad OS 18, then I am really glad that I returned the M4 iPad Pro. iPad OS is going to be compatible with these iPads. Watch OS 11 has some small features. However, if you are an Apple Watch fan, I think you're going to be, take advantage of a lot of these features. For example, there is a training load. I call it training mode, but it allows users to see exactly the intensity of their training load. There's also a new Vitals app that just basically gathers all of the important health information for you and you have it on one screen and this is going to be very helpful. You can also pause the uh, activity rings which is going to be very helpful for those who are consistently trying to close their rings. In addition, you're also going to get live activities and this is a feature where if you order Uber, for example, you'll be able to see the status of your ride on the lock screen on your iPhone and on the Apple Watch, you'll be able to see it as a widget. WatchOS 11 is going to be compatible with these Apple Watches. With macOS Sequoia, there's going to be a ton of different features, some that I really love, and that is iPhone Mirror. You can use iPhone mirroring to actually take control of your iPhone using your Mac, and you'll be able to drag and drop files from the Mac to the iPhone. You will also be able to receive all of the notifications that your iPhone get on your Mac. The best part is, is that while you are using iPhone mirroring, your iPhone is still locked. This is a feature that I know I am going to take advantage of once it is available in the fall. Safari also got a nice update where you would be able to pull all of the relevant information from a site. I believe Chrome does this already. You can correct me if I'm wrong. These next two updates are going to be pretty quick. Vision OS, you're just going to get new gestures in order to control uh, your home screen. You also have compatibility with the Magic Mouse and Bluetooth keyboards. TVOS, I think the biggest update is the Insight feature. And how that works is if you are watching a TV program using your Apple TV and you think about, oh, where have I seen this particular actor from? What Insight allows you to do is get that information. And it's very similar to the Amazon Prime app. By far, the biggest announcement was Apple Intelligence. AI is finally going mainstream. A lot of people heard of ChatGPT. With Apple Intelligence, however, that is going to be on your smartphone. That's going to be face-to-face. -face. You're going to interact with it almost daily. Apple Intelligence allows you to look at an email and you can get all of the relevant contact information and files. Like other AI chatbots, Apple Intelligence allows you to send a request to make your email sound more professional. It also allows you to prioritize notifications. However, they didn't really go too much into detail during the keynote, but I am pretty sure throughout this week, there will be a lot more information that Apple releases and we'll get to know exactly how Apple Intelligence prioritizes notifications. You could also create images. So if you used any AI uh, software, you're going to be right at home with Apple Intelligence. And this is a partnership with ChatGPT and that is huge. And what Apple is doing is it's using its on-device power and server power in order to provide the answers and statuses of these requests. According to Apple, it's all going to be private. It's all going to be secure. It's all going to be more personal to you. With Apple Intelligence, you are going to be able to power it with all of the information you have on your device. One thing to note, Apple Intelligence is coming in the fall as beta, and that is a very important distinction because we've seen with other chatbots that 
the answers returned are not accurate. We see that a lot of companies have to scale back, uh, including Google with its uh, Gemini results. Apple, they have to take it slow because let's face it, any negative publicity with Apple intelligence is going to reflect horribly on the company. Not to say that it, that it didn't have that impact for Google as well, but with Apple, everyone has their eyes on Apple. The mainstream have their eyes on Apple. Everyday normal people who are not in the tech community, they have their eye on Apple. And if Apple messes this up, this is going to put a further bad taste in people's mouth about AI. Apple Intelligence is going to be available for users on the iPhone 15 Pro series of devices and obviously the 16 Pro as well. This, we can expect the 16 Pro to have some additional features in order for it to stand out against the 15 Pro. And we'll see what Apple has in store in September when the iPhone 16 will be announced to the world. So let me know what you think. Do you think that you will update to any of these new operating systems in the fall when they are available to the public? Be sure to hit subscribe because I am going to have a ton of iOS 18 videos, how-to guides, the review of iOS 18 to let you know if it's safe to update. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.